Hello, welcome to the course SJPHY1C01 Properties of Matter and Thermodynamics. The contents of today's lecture is taken from Heat and Thermodynamics by Prichlal and Subramanian. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 3 Thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics talked about the equivalence of heat and work done. So when our work done either by the system or on the system, an equivalent of heat energy is involved. But first law has a limitation. It doesn't talk about the direction of heat flow. And this is answered by the second law of thermodynamics. Unlike zeroth and first law, second law has three statements. First one is known as the Kelvin statement, second one is the Planck statement, and third one is Clausius statement. First, let's look into the Kelvin statement, which says that it is impossible to get continuous supply of work from a body by cooling it to a temperature lower than its surroundings. This is the fundamental principle behind the working of heat engine. So what we do now is we will try to understand the basic working of a heat engine. And after that, the Kelvin statement will make more sense to you. As you know, heat engine is a device which converts heat energy into mechanical energy. And it has three major components. One is a heat source. Another one is a heat sink and the working substance. So in a heat engine, the working substance extracts heat from the source, which is maintained at a higher temperature, converts a part of this heat energy into mechanical work and rejects the rest of the heat energy to the sink, which is maintained at a lower temperature. So source is at a higher temperature, sink is at a lower temperature. And the engine works only as long as the source temperature is greater than the sink temperature. So the moment the source temperature is equal to or less than the sink temperature, the engine stops working. And no heat engine can convert the entire heat absorbed from the source into useful work without rejecting a part of it into the sink. So heat engine cannot convert the entire heat energy from the source into work, a part of it has to go to the sink. Now let's take uh, a heat engine where Q1 is the heat absorbed from the source, W is the work done by the engine and Q2 is the remaining heat which is given to the sink. So Q1 is absorbed from the source, Q2 is rejected to the sink and the difference of these two is utilized in doing some work. So I can write work done W equal to Q1 minus Q2. So this is the animation of working of a heat engine. So here you have some fuel burning which generates heat. So this is your source. So the heat energy from the source is utilized to do some useful work here and a part of the heat energy is given to the sink. Here sink is the surrounding air. So a part of the heat is lost into the surrounding air. Now the efficiency of the heat engine is defined as fraction of work done from the heat absorbed. So efficiency eta is defined as work done W divided by heat absorbed Q1. W as we know is Q1 minus Q2. So eta equal to Q1 minus Q2 divided by Q1, which is 1 minus Q2 by Q1. Let's now see what is the maximum possible efficiency for a heat engine. Can it have 100% efficiency? If efficiency 100%, then eta equal to 1. So what are the conditions in which eta becomes 1? There are two possibilities, either q2 equal to 0, so 1 minus 0 equal to 0, or q1 equal to infinity. Anything you divide with infinity, you get 0. So 1 minus 0, again 1. Now physically, what do these mean? q2 equal to 0 means 
no heat energy is given to the sink so the entire heat extracted from the source is converted into work but from the second law we know that no heat engine can convert entire heat absorbed from the source into useful work without projecting a part of it into the sink so q2 has to be non zero then what about q1 being infinity q1 is the heat absorbed from the source so in the case of any practical heat engine the source will be at a very high temperature but of course the source temperature cannot be infinity right no practical engine can work with infinite temperature so q1 in no practical engine can be infinity you can make it very high but it can never be infinity so in no condition you are going to get 100% efficiency so uh, the inference from this equation is that for every practical heat engine the efficiency is going to be less than 100% moving on to uh, the second statement of uh, the second law of thermodynamics which is known as planck statement which says that it is impossible to construct an engine which working in complete cycles will produce no effect other than raising a height and cooling of a heat reservoir now raising a height and this indicates uh, some mechanical work and cooling of reservoir it indicates extraction of heat energy from the source by the way source is also known as reservoir so in other words what planck statement means is that it is impossible to construct an engine which working in complete cycles will produce no effect other than extraction of heat from a reservoir and its conversion into equivalent amount of work just like we have discussed in the previous case a heat engine any practical heat engine has to has to reject a part of the heat absorbed from the source into the sink now coming to the third statement which is known as the clausius statement of second law it is impossible for a self acting machine working in cycles to transfer heat from a body of lower temperature to a body of higher temperature unaided by an external agency in other words heat cannot flow from a cold body to a hot body by itself so this is the working principle of a refrigerator uh, which is the exact opposite of a heat engine in heat engine heat flows from a hot body to a cold body or from a source to a sink and during this process work is done by the system on the other hand the case of refrigerator heat flows in the opposite direction from a cold body to a hot body or from the sink to the source so if you look at the refrigerator in your home inside of the refrigerator the temperature is very less so this is the cold body and where does the refrigerator dump the temperature into the surrounding air right and surrounding air is at room temperature which is higher than the temperature inside so surrounding air is the hot body so heat is flowing from cold body to hot body and second law of thermodynamics states that by itself heat cannot flow from cold body to hot body and if you want this to happen you need to do external work on to the system so that's the reason why in the case of a refrigerator in your home we supply electricity so electricity acts as the external agency which does work on the uh, the working substance and because of this work heat flows in the opposite direction now having understood the basics of second law of thermodynamics and the working of a basic uh, heat engine let's ask ourselves a fun question can a ship move by utilizing the internal energy of the sea 
So ship, ship is moving on the sea and sea has a lot of water and water has a, lo a lot of internal energy. So there is a, an infinite supply of internal energy. And energy, as we know, is nothing but the ability to do work. So can we use this internal energy to, to propel the ship? Because we know that in the case of water stored in dams, so when you release water through a shutter, so water flows down, it makes a turbine rotate and electricity is produced, right? This is a hydroelectric power plant. Here, basically, the internal energy or the potential energy of the water is converted into electrical energy. So the question is, in the case of a ship moving in a sea, can I convert the internal energy into mechanical energy? Now, can we answer this from the, from the principles of a heat engine? Now, in the case of heat engine, we know that the source and sink should be at two different temperatures. Source at a higher temperature, sink at a lower temperature. Only then the engine works, right? Now, in the case of a ship moving in the sea, we want the ship to take energy from the sea. So, the energy source is the sea. And what is the sink? Sink is nothing but the surrounding here. The ship is surrounded by the sea itself, so sink is also sea. So basically, in the case of a ship moving in a sea, the source temperature as well as the sink temperature both are same. So since these two temperatures are same, it cannot work. It can work only when source temperature is greater than sink temperature. So we can never make a ship move by utilizing the internal energy of the sea. Now coming to the, the working of a heat engine, heat engine always works in cycles or the working of a heat engine is a cyclic process. Cyclic process as we have discussed in the previous class, uh, here the at the end of the process, the system comes back to the same initial state. In other words, the initial state is same as the final state. So in a heat engine, the working substance goes through a series of changes with respect to pressure, volume and temperature, but finally returns to the same initial state. A complete set of changes the working substance undergoes before coming back to the initial state constitutes one cycle of operation. Let's now take a model system known as Carnot engine. So in 1984, a scientist called Sadi Carnot conceived the idea of an ideal heat engine with maximum efficiency based on the following assumptions. So the Carnot engine is free from friction and other mechanical imperfections. It absorbs heat from a source of constant high temperature and rejects unused heat to a sink of constant low temperature and it works in a perfect reversible cycle. So all these are hypothetical assumptions because in no practical heat engine these assumptions are valid because Heat engines ultimately make some kind of mechanical movement, so friction is unavoidable and also you can never maintain the temperature of source and sink constant. For example, in most of the practical heat engines, the sink is going to be the surrounding here, air. So during the operation of the, the machine, the surrounding air is going to be heated up. So basically the temperature of the sink is going to increase as you operate the heat engine. And also, no heat engine works in perfect reversible cycle. It never comes back to the exact same initial state. So in other words, Carnot engine is a hypothetical engine. Nevertheless, it provides an excellent platform for us to work out our principles of thermodynamics without any of the practical constraints. The Carnot engine has four important components as shown in this figure, a cylinder having perfectly non-conducting walls and perfectly conducting base and a perfectly non-conducting frictionless piston. 
So the cylinder contains one mole of ideal gas and this gas is a working substance. Then it has a source of infinite thermal capacity which is maintained at a constant high temperature T1. So what's the need to have infinite thermal capacity when you have a material of infinite thermal capacity? How much of the heat you draw from it, the temperature is going to remain constant. Similarly, you have a sink of infinite thermal capacity which is maintained at a constant low temperature T2. So once again, since it has infinite thermal capacity, how much of our heat you supply to the sink, the temperature is going to remain constant. Finally, it has a perfectly insulating, non-conducting stand on which the cylinder can be placed. So these are the components of a Carnot engine. In the next class, we will try to analyze uh, a Carnot cycle using the principles of thermodynamics we have learned so far and also we will try to derive an equation for work done in the case of one complete cycle of operation. That's for today. Thank you.